So today's topic of the day, alpha lipoic acid, also known as ALA, should you pass it or stack it? Well, it's a term you might have heard of if you've been trying to lose stubborn belly fat, and it's been touted to be able to increase fat burn just by taking it orally once, maybe twice a day. But does that have any scientific backing? Well, let's find out. In this video, we're gonna go through a few online papers that I've summarized here, and I'm gonna give you maybe some of the cliff notes, dumb it down a little bit, let you know exactly what it means, and then whether you should take it or not, and if it affects your ever important natty status. So let's continue. In a 2019 study published by the National Library of Medicine, they broke down a few clinical trials that involved the use of ALA supplementation, trying to see if they could burn more belly fat than baseline, which would be not using it. So I'm gonna read off some of what they found, and then I'll kind of give you a little summary here. So a group of researchers labeled ALA as an organosulfur component produced by plants, animals, and humans. We're just gonna say it's an antioxidant, and if you've heard about that, it means it's good for you in general. Next, they said it's widely used for diabetic polyneuropathy to reduce pain and paresthesia, pain and numbness, and they stated despite its various potentials, ALA has a low therapeutic efficacy, which means it's not very useful. Either it's not very useful in a normative dose, so you have to go very high dose to be able to use it, or it's just not useful in general. So we'll find out here. Mostly due to its terrible bioavailability and pharmacokinetic profile, writing that it's short half-life, so how long it's actually in your body, 30% bioavailability and significant hepatic degradation, so how much your liver actually degrades it, before it gets pushed into your system, led to a reduced solubility and a high gastric instability. Gastric instability meaning it gets broken down in your stomach before you even get to use it. These were a few of the main factors leading to their assessment. This isn't to say that ALA isn't useful clinically though. It's well known that it can help with the aforementioned diabetic issues like polyneuropathy, and it can also be used for multiple central nervous systems I've seen some papers cite it can be used for schizophrenia and things like that as well, maybe even depression. It is well known that ALA is able to assist in multiple diabetic issues as well as some central nervous issues, but this is typically done in a very controlled setting where they're able to control the type that they create, the dosage that they use, the way that they're administering it even through injection instead of orally, and then the manipulation of the actual antimeter type, which is like there's an S type and an R type and we don't have to worry about that for this video. From this description, if we have to manipulate the type that we need to get to the point where we're scrolling online for hours to find the exact type that works instead of just going in and buying it off the shelves, if we have to take it three, four times the recommended dose that's labeled on it, and if we have to change the administration from oral to maybe injection, then as devout natties as we all are, we should probably pass. But let's see what they have to say about the actual studies done on obese populations or populations that are overweight trying to get into a normal range. So in the paper, they went on to talk about the multiple studies they summarized and the clinical trials of obese patients. With the proper administration, ALA did significantly help markers such as waist circumference in many of the patients, glucose regulation, which is their blood sugar, body fat reduction, interleukin levels, which is inflammation within the body, leptin regulation, which is how much you feel hunger physically and psychologically to some point, uh, and fatty acid regulation within the bloodstream. Even though in most of these cases, and you might have guessed this ahead of time, it was ALA plus exercise plus diet. So we don't really know if it was exactly the ALA in these studies. If you're going to take it, looks like a normal dose would be 1300 milligrams a day, most likely in the morning, but it's advised to talk to your physician first because ALA can have negative side effects. Now, in a study from Oregon State University, they gave some interesting advice on applications of ALA. The cliff notes would be this. It's more effective to take without food instead of with food in the mornings, usually, in a liquid form instead of in a solid pill form. It's more effective uh, in the morning, no more than an hour before light to moderate exercise, so maybe before cardio, and it's better to be done fasted. So not just don't take it with food, but try to do your exercise after taking it before you even eat for the day. In their section specifically on weight management, they state, and you can take a look here, a 2018 meta-analysis of randomized placebo-controlled trials found that lipoic acid, or alpha-lipoic acid as we're looking at it, supplementation in those with high body mass indexes 
resulted in significant yet modest reductions in weight. So that means clinically significant, which is usually something that you can actually observe, but not uh, extremely high, So, which is why they say yet modest. So they didn't give exact numbers here, but we're not thinking they lost 50 pounds in two months. Subgroup analysis showed that the weight loss was actually greater in the overweight population and not in the obese population. In unhealthy versus healthy participants, the unhealthy participants actually lost more weight as well, which is interesting because in the overweight population, they lost more weight probably because they were able to do more activity than the obese population. But when it came to comorbidities, the unhealthier population lost more weight than the healthy. So it might be more interesting to deep dive into some of those reference trials. When all is said and done, if you're aware of the possible side effects, you've conversed with your doctor, or your physician, your goal is in fact fat loss, and you'd find it easy to add to your routine, maybe in the morning when you take your multivitamins, then I would definitely give it a stack. All right, that's what we're talking about with alpha lipoic acid. If you wanna do any further research into it, I have linked five papers in the description that you can look at, and you can also look at any of their supporting text, so that's access to a couple hundred papers talking about ALA, and I'll see you in the next video. Hope you learned something.